Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about bolt circle coordinates. We are going to take our bolt circle and place it on what's called a Cartesian coordinate system. It's also called a rectangular coordinate system, which consists of two axes, a horizontal axis, which is the X axis, and a vertical axis, which is called the Y axis, or you might refer to it as a cross speed axis. We're going to center that circle so that its center is at the origin, which is the point of intersection of the two axes. So the center of our circle will be at that point of intersection, which is called the origin. Now you have four quadrants in your Cartesian coordinate system. This is called quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And it's important to understand where the X coordinate will be positive and where it will be negative, and the same thing with the Y coordinate. So anything to the right of this point here, or this axis, will be a positive value for X. So that means X will be positive in these two quadrants. Similarly, this, it's like a, the negative values on a number line, anything to the left of that axis Will, the x will be negative. So in these two quadrants, x will be negative. If we take a look at the y values, y will be positive above the x-axis, so in these two quadrants, and anything below that, y will be negative. So y will be negative in these two quadrants. We're going to be dealing with angles, and we always start with our angles in standard position. Standard position means that the initial side of the angle will be the positive x-axis. So in terms of a clock, it's like three o'clock. That's zero degrees. And then when we talk about our angle of rotation, we go in a counterclockwise direction. That will be a positive angle. If you go in a clockwise direction, it will be called a negative angle. We're going to place the first hole of our bolt circle on that axis. We can find the coordinates of our first hole. It will simply be, the X coordinate will be the radius of that bolt circle and the Y coordinate will be zero. In order to find the coordinates of the other holes, we're gonna to have to use right triangles. So for example, if our next hole was here and I wanted to find the X and the Y coordinate, I can see that they're both gonna be positive because it's in quadrant one. I am going to draw a line from the center of that hole to the origin, then I'm going to drop down a vertical line to the x-axis and make it perpendicular with the x-axis. So I have a right angle here. So this length along here is x, the vertical distance is y. This distance will be the radius. In order to find the x as well as the y-coordinate of that point, I'm going to use my trig functions. So let's talk about the x-coordinate first. If I'm dealing with the x-coordinate and I'm, I'm going to know the radius, I'm going to know this angle. We'll talk about how we find that angle in a minute. But if I'm dealing with these two sides, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. So the trig function that uses the adjacent side and the hypotenuse is the cosine function. So the cosine of our angle will be equal to x divided by the radius. Because we're going to be finding x, I want to isolate it, which means I'm going to multiply both sides by the radius. So when I multiply this side by the radius, it will cancel, and I have to multiply this side by the radius. So I'm going to use this formula to find the x-coordinate of the next hole. I'm going to need to know the angle, and I'm going to need to know the radius. I do the same thing in order to find the y-coordinate. This vertical distance is y, and in terms of this angle, it's opposite this angle. So I'm going to use the radius and the opposite side, which is the sine function. So the sine of my angle will be the opposite, which is y, divided by the radius. And in order to find y, again, I'm going to multiply both sides by the radius. When I do the one side of the equation, I have to do the other. And I'm doing that so that it will cancel on this side, and I'll simply have y. So y will equal radius times the sine of our angle. 
So these are the two formulas that we're going to use to find the coordinates for this hole and any subsequent holes. So let's take a look at how we're going to use this with a particular example. Our example has five equally spaced holes on a circle that has a radius of 1.250 inches. If you're given the diameter, simply divide by two to get the radius. We want to find the coordinates of each of these holes. So we're going to start with hole number one being placed on the positive x-axis. When a hole is placed on the x-axis, the y value will be zero. And the x value will be the radius. So the x coordinate is 1.250 inches. And the y value, if we want to write it to the nearest thousandths, will be 0, 0.000 inches. Let's find hole number two. In order to use these formulas, we need to know the angle. So if we have five equally spaced holes, a complete rotation is 360 degrees. So to find the angle between subsequent holes, we take 360 degrees and we divide by the number of divisions or holes that there are to get the angle between subsequent holes. So the angle that we're going to use for hole number two is 72 degrees, and we're going to plug into these two formulas to find the x and the y coordinates. When we put the radius and the angle in, we get an x coordinate of 0 0.386 inches and a y coordinate of 1.189 inches. That makes sense that they're both positive because we're still in quadrant one. In order to find the coordinates for hole number three, I need to know this angle. And I know that the angle between subsequent holes is 72 degrees. So we add another 72 degrees to this and we get 144 degrees. If you're unsure how to plug those into your calculator, check with your particular calculator. Or if you've got a Texas Instrument XA30, you can take a look at the video I sh where I showed how to do it on that particular calculator. When you do the calculation for X, you should get negative 1.011 inches and for Y, 0 0.735 inches. And that makes sense because in this quadrant, the X coordinate should be negative because it's on this side of the Y axis. The Y coordinate should be positive because it's above the X axis. Let's continue on for hole number four and number five. In order to find the angle for hole number four, I take 144 degrees and add another 72 degrees. When we take 144 degrees and add 72 degrees, we will get 216 degrees. So to find the X coordinate, we take the cos of that and multiply it by 1.25. We get negative 1.011 inches. Y is equal to 1.25 times the sine of that angle, which is negative 0.735 inches. It makes sense that they're both negative because we are to the left of the y-axis and we are below the x-axis. Last one, to find the angle for hole number five, we take 216 degrees and add 72 degrees. So when I add 72 degrees to 216 degrees, I get an angle of 288 degrees to hole number five, plug into my formula, and I get an x-coordinate of 0.386 inches I get a y coordinate of negative 1.189 inches. Again, makes sense that x is positive in this quadrant and y is negative. Whenever a hole is on an axis, one of the coordinates will be zero and the other coordinate will be either the positive or negative radius. So if you understand that, you can certainly take that shortcut. If you don't use a shortcut or you don't trust a shortcut, that's fine. The formula still works even when the points are on at the axis.